Good morning again, everyone. I mentioned, thank you, I mentioned to the, the priest that standing up there to give a talk uh, this morning was a very strange feeling because I went to Franciscan University and eventually went left early to uh, join the Legionaries of Christ, then eventually left the Legionaries of Christ, became priest of the Archdiocese of New York. And being back here after 20 years and knowing too that I was not, I was the least spiritual person on the campus, I believe, while I was here. I mean, I didn't go to a single festival of praise, you know, FOPs we called them. Never went to a, s I, I knew I was in the least spiritual household. They have households here of, you know, we, we were like the anti-household household and more like a beer drinking community than anything else. If you can imagine, uh, they, they celebrate the household, something uh, called the Lord's Day, which is you, you pass around bread and wine, uh, and we passed around Budweiser. Honest to God. Um, just, just to be very clear uh, uh, why I shouldn't be um, giving the homily today either. Uh, but God, God's mysterious ways are stronger, way stronger, way stronger than any of our weakness or any of our best laid plans. We're here this weekend, this week, in order to draw closer to God and maybe to get away from our parish. I don't know. When I went down to the chapel after our first session, I did what I shouldn't have done and looked at my, uh, my phone. And the Indian priest who uh, is my associate um, has informed me that he'll be leaving a week earlier than originally planned, which means he's leaving the day that I get back <laughs> for five weeks. And the associate uh, that, or the priest in residence that I had that was supposed to come back is not coming back. This is our life. This is our life. And this is our path to holiness in the midst of the messiness of daily parish life. The messiness that is the lives of our parishioners and the messiness that is our own lives. Not just the messiness of sin, but also of our inadequacies, of our doubts, of our unfulfilled desires, of our jealousy, of our envy, of our laziness, of our fears. There are seminarians here, and I thought I would tell a little story of something that happened to me when I was in seminary that was one of the hardest points of, of my formation. It was during a period in which uh, between philosophy and theology, we would take uh, pastoral years, and usually three, and I think I was in my second, second one, and I was not um, doing very well, I think. You know, I was, um, I had let my spiritual life kind of slip, and I was with, I was working with a priest who drove me crazy um, at, at the time, at least during those weeks, you know. And I was uh, traveling through a, um, a town um, south of Hartford. I believe it was, um, well, it might have been one of you priests. I, maybe I shouldn't say it, but uh, I went into the confessional. And I said, uh, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. And I said, I'm a seminarian. And then I went on and I told him my sins. And this priest said something that I'll never forget. He said, um, I don't think he knew my name. I don't think I told him, but he said something, Jonathan or young man or something. He said, you know that the devil exists, right? And I said, uh, yep, I do. And he said, well, guess what? The devil wants you to be a good guy and just a good guy. 
I knew when he said it that it was directly from the Holy Spirit. Because my temptation at the time was not to go off and to be a bad guy. It wasn't to, you know, commit the sins of the flesh that were whatever those were. My temptation was very simple. It was just give up enough. The devil wants you to be a good guy and just a good guy. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. What are those false prophets in our lives? I think we all have different ones, and I wouldn't dare suggest what they might be. I told the priest this morning that, for me, one of the big ones is caring what other people think about me reacting to that on a daily basis, working in my office instead of walking the streets with the people so that my secretary will think I'm working. What a stupid, stupid idea. Right? Who cares what the secretary thinks? But there are so many others that come. The temptation to give up uh, because things are just kind of too hard, or to talk with the people that we like talking with and who tell us that we're doing a great job and to avoid the people uh, who give us a hard time. There's a woman uh, who sits in the back. I probably shouldn't say that these are, <laughs> I was gonna give her a seat number. And these, you know, who kn she's probably the one who's gonna like check, check out this, uh, you know, the, this taping of this homily and give me the, the, <laughs> the notes. <laughs> She sits somewhere in my church. You've seen her before, okay? And it must have been two weeks after I arrived, and my parish is, is, is trilingual. You know, it's Italian, Spanish, and English. And this woman doesn't speak Italian, but she's Italian. And a few weeks into it, I put up on outside of my church the uh, Holy Week schedule. And... It was just too complicated to put it in English, Italian, and Spanish because it's, there's not that much room. And so I called, knowing the sensitivities, I called uh, in a few Italians, uh, Italian speakers, and I showed them the English and the Spanish. I said, do you understand this? And they're like, si, padre, non c'è problema, perfetto. Perfetto. Ah, okay, good, I'm good now, right? I put up the, and then I get the phone call from the baker down the street. You better watch out, Father. They're really upset at you. <laughs> Why? What did I do? You didn't put the Italian translation of the Holy Week schedule in the front of the church. I'm like, okay, well, who is it? She doesn't want you to know who it is. <laughs> and well, I found out because of that glare glaring look she would give to me from that one pew and so I called her and she told me that she had already called the archdiocese uh, but that uh, she was going to be working to make sure that other people did too you're lucky you got a priest in the first place this place was supposed to be closed that's what I wanted to say And the sheep, or the wolf, that was in sheep clothing was not her. It was the sheep, the wolf in sheep clothing for me on that day was anger. I was justified to be upset. I mean, really, I've been here two weeks. Give me a break. The wolf in sheep's clothing for me in that moment was to go into my little world of self-defense. But deep down, it was because I cared too much about what other people thought of me, and I wasn't humble enough to say I was wrong. I 
was wrong. And I was. It turns out this year I had Italian, English, and Spanish. We made the, we made the whole thing a little bigger. I, it turns out I was wrong. I should have put it in Italian. I know now. But I was wrong first and foremost because I decided that I was going to give in to the wolf that looked like justified anger and to wonder why I was there, what was I doing, why this parish, et cetera, et cetera. Brothers, we're going to have time to talk more later on this, this evening. But in the Eucharist today, we ask the Lord to open up my heart. Not that we become more virtuous, but that we become men with hearts more like the hearts of Jesus. Humble, humble, humble. Humble, humble, humble. The three things that I am not. Because when we become that, when, when we become that, it's very easy for us to say no to the wolves and to say yes to the shepherd who wants to bring us, his sheep, into the place of holiness and of happiness and of joy.